a merging of commercial banks, their regulators, and the intelligence agencies is a complete nightmare scenario, but this is exactly what the World Economic Forum has come to promote as a model public-private partnership. But perhaps more critically for American citizens, this is a policy developed with the direct participation of the U.S. Federal Reserve, the FDIC, the U.S. Secret Service, the FBI, the Department of Justice, and the country's most systemically important commercial banks. These American federal agencies, institutions, and commercial banks are playing a major role in developing regulations that will inevitably target Bitcoin. They have made it very clear in media reports, press releases, and policy documents that they see financial privacy, the popularity of Bitcoin, and the value of Bitcoin as direct threats responsible for what they define as cybercrime. Renowned investigative journalist and writer Whitney Webb has one important message for every conscious member of society in 2024. We are under attack. Our liberty, privacy, freedom, independence, and every other virtue and attribute that makes us proud members of society are gradually being stripped away, and most people don't even realize it. Whitney has been consistent in her warnings about a grand plot by the global elites to subjugate all of humanity by taking away anything and everything that can be used as a form of resistance. To achieve all this while ensuring that everyone stays subservient, they will try to take our money. Before 2009, that would have been a walk in the park for them. These people control the banking system, our central banks, and possibly even a large portion of our governments. However, the creation and launch of Bitcoin gave people an escape route, a way out of a system that has reigned with terror for hundreds of years. But now, Bitcoin and the entire cryptocurrency industry are under attack. According to Whitney's insightful analogy, a conscious effort is underway to demonize everything about Bitcoin and force it under the label of cybercrime. While attending a Bitcoin conference last year, Whitney revealed amazing details about a global initiative called Partnership Against Cybercrime, PAC, created by the highly controversial World Economic Forum in 2020. This partnership has charged itself with combating cybercrime through a joint effort between private organizations and law enforcement agencies worldwide. And it's way more devious than you can ever imagine. According to the WEF website, this partnership is a collaborative research initiative that gathers and collates information about the cybercriminal ecosystem and major threat actors. This self-appointed organization created by a megalomaniac with a god complex is partnering with big tech and large commercial banks to gather information about cybercrime on which law enforcement agencies would then act. But the real clincher is they get to decide what should be classified as cybercrime, and they can use non-legal methods to achieve their aims. During her presentation last year, Whitney warned that the initiative has no intention of fighting cybercrime, but taking control of the internet and every tool that ensures private transactions and activities. As we bring you clips from Whitney's explosive presentation, please take a minute to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. Perhaps unsurprisingly, many of the groups looking to allegedly combat cybercrime in the U.S. and beyond, including the Department of Justice and the FBI, are part of an international public-private partnership housed within the World Economic Forum that is seeking to define these terms in unsettling ways. Not only that, but this group and its partner organizations are also seeking policy objectives that, if widely implemented, would cr treat anonymous cryptocurrency transactions and specifically Bitcoin transactions involving mixers and related privacy tools as criminal. They also, without evidence, assert that there is a direct link between an increase in the value of cryptocurrencies, specifically Bitcoin, and an increase in cyber criminal activity. This public-private partnership, the WEF Partnership Against Cybercrime, or WEFPAC, is run by a former intelligence agent named Tal Goldstein, whose military career, or military intelligence career rather, was marked by his efforts to have intelligence agencies essentially fuse with private technology companies and his native Israel. Today, WEFPAC's members not only include the FBI, the Department of Justice, the US Secret Service, and intelligence agencies of Israel and Britain, they also include massive too-big-to-fail banks, like Bank of America and Santander, as well as massive tech companies like Amazon and Microsoft, 
PayPal is also there. So is the nonprofit that manages the SWIFT payment system. In recent reports, WEFPAC has alleged that there is a connection between the use of cryptocurrencies as well as cyber, uh, sorry, privacy enhancing tools such as mixers and the incidents of cybercrime. They argue that, quote, Cyber criminals abuse encryption, cryptocurrencies, anonymity services, and other technologies, but fail to note that their use is hardly exclusive to criminals. Though they refrain from naming any currency specifically, the WEF has stated elsewhere on its website that, quote, governments don't like the fact that Bitcoin users are anonymous and they have concerns over its use for criminal activity and money laundering, adding that their worries aren't unfounded. It's important to point out that WEFPAC doesn't see cyber criminals, just as those who may engage in hacks or financially motivated acts like ransomware attacks. To WEFPAC, cyber criminals also include those who use technologies to uphold terrorism and spread disinformation to destabilize governments and democracies. From that, it seems that WEFPAC's inclusion of disinformation as a type of cybercrime betrays an intention to develop policies that under the guise of, of combating cybercrime will instead promote increased online censorship, particularly of independent media. In discussing solutions, WEFPAC calls for the global targeting of infrastructures and assets deemed to facilitate cybercrime, including those which enable cybercriminal revenue streams, which, as we will see shortly, refers to infrastructure that allows for more private cryptocurrency transactions and enables, quote, the promotion of illegal sites and the hosting of criminal content. In another section, the group discusses seizing the websites of cyber criminals as an attractive possibility. Given that WEFPAC and its members, like the FBI, view disinformation as a form of cybercrime, this could potentially see independent media websites and the infrastructure that allows them to operate and finance their work, like video sharing and payment platforms that do not censor, emerge as targets. Because the cybercrime threat is global in scope, its solution must also be a globally coordinated effort. They say that the main way to achieve this involves, quote, harnessing the private sector to work side by side with law enforcement officials. Shockingly, WEFPAC calls for this cooperation to take place even if it is not, quote, always aligned with existing legislative and operational frameworks. In other words, they are saying this cooperation should be allowed to take place even if it is illegal. Another organization Whitney warned us to be wary about is the Financial Services Information Sharing and Analysis Center, FS Isaac, a consortium focused on reducing cyber risk in the global financial system. According to Whitney, the consortium has been charged with helping the global financial industry stay resilient against cyber-related threats, which often means they get to decide what constitutes a cyber threat and the response to it. Not entirely surprising, F.S. Isaac made some predictions about cybercrime in 2021. It predicted that economic drivers toward cybercrime would increase and become more attractive, especially due to the dramatic increases in the prices of cryptocurrency assets. The organization all but stated that crypto would be responsible for an increase in cybercrime and that prices would have to be brought down to make cybercrime less attractive to cybercriminals. During the presentation, Whitney pointed out that there is a huge overlap between F.S. Isaac and PAC. They share information and insights, and many big bank executives are members of both organizations. In addition, both have almost free reign to decide what constitutes cybercrime and will benefit hugely from demonizing crypto. Let's get back to Whitney's presentation. If the banks, intelligence agencies, and tech companies that partnered with these initiatives see not just financial privacy, but the value of Bitcoin itself as a threat, it goes without saying that their efforts to stop cybercrime at its source would not just involve eradicating financial privacy when it comes to crypto, but also working to devalue crypto. With such groups openly discussing working outside of legal frameworks to accomplish their goals, Bitcoiners must start paying closer attention to these shadowy groups. There is no proof that cryptocurrency, or more specifically Bitcoin, is the key driver of cybercrime, as cybercrime significantly predates the existence of both. 
However, cryptocurrency does present a threat to the plans of FSISAC members and their partners to begin producing digital currencies controlled either by a approved commercial banks or central banks themselves, digital currencies that are designed to be easily surveilled. Central bank digital currencies in particular are being designed and implemented to erode financial privacy and autonomy. The success of CBDCs and related projects depends on neutering the competition, which is likely why FSISAC has called for the economic drivers of cybercrime to be combated by, by a global financial cyber utility, which is of course the very same globalist entity that WEFPAC seeks to create. Not long before FSISAC and WEFPAC made all of these claims, many members of both groups participated in a 2020 initiative hosted by the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, itself a member of WEFPAC. The president of the endowment at the time was William Burns, who subsequently became Joe Biden's pick for CIA director less than a year later. The Carnegie Endowments Initiative brought together many members of WEFPAC and FSISAC with an important addition, representatives of central banks, namely the U.S. Federal Reserve and the European Central Bank. Also notably present in this initiative was the U.S.'s Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or the FDIC. The report developed by these parties is astounding as it states that the main cause of global financial instability is not irresponsible central bank policies or commercial banks engaging in criminal behavior, but instead, quote, the current fragmentation among stakeholders and initiatives. They argue that the main solution needed to stabilize the global financial system lies in reducing that fragmentation. The only way to accomplish that, they say, requires the massive reorganization of all stakeholders via in, uh, increased global coordination. They specifically note that the, quote, disconnect between the finance, the national security, and the diplomatic communities is particularly pronounced and calls for much closer interaction between all three. It goes on to state the following, quote, this requires countries not only to better organize themselves domestically, but also to strengthen international cooperation to defend against, investigate, prosecute, and ideally prevent future attacks. This implies that the financial sector and financial authorities must regularly interact with law enforcement and other national security agencies in unprecedented ways, both domestically and internationally, end quote. Essentially, this initiative has called to begin fusing commercial banks and financial authorities, like regulators, with national security and law enforcement agencies. This policy could not be more insane or dystopian. Making things even worse is the fact that WEFPAC, of which the Carnegie Endowment and many of the other organizations behind this policy are members, not only call for this fusion to take place, they call to do so in ways, again, that may be illegal. This conspiracy clearly reaches far and wide. It is obvious that we have a big fight ahead of us to ensure that privacy does not become criminalized and that a few megalomaniac billionaires cannot dictate how more than 8 billion people live, save, invest, and carry out financial transactions. The entire reason why Bitcoin was created is to give people a way out of the system. We cannot allow them to change the narrative because bad people do bad things. Even the U.S. Treasury Department agrees that fiat currencies are still the preferred medium of exchange for criminals. Yet, no effort is being made to criminalize the financial industry. Instead, it is the same corrupt industry that has its hands on everything from drugs to money laundering and sex trafficking that is gaslighting a novel industry that is a thousand times more transparent and accountable. What are your thoughts on Whitney's presentation? Please drop your comments below give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. For more mind-blowing reveals, don't forget to activate the notifications bell and check out our other videos. Thanks for watching.